down with fellas, she give you an opportunity to come up and say something. Have a good day. Give you an opportunity to come up and say something. Okay, we're live now. All right, we're live. Again, let me just say that again. Just, we just went live. I want to thank all the members that are in the audience, um, our community members, as well as those who have joined us on Facebook. I wish you all would have come. I brought a lot of pizza. Again, I'm going to put my disclaimer in there. The pizza was paid for out of my pocket, um, and not taxpayers' dollars. So, um, just to let y'all know, yes, we do have food. Um, I want to open it up by just saying thank you all for spending a, a, a little while with me this evening. I'm not going to be online uh, or in here long because I know we all have very busy schedules. Plus, it's Wednesday, which is Bible study today. So, um, I just wanted to get a few things out as far as the recap. Um, I'm going to start off by some of the some of the many. Or the right way to put it, um, many questions that have been asked uh, recently throughout the Facebook feeds that I've been hearing. And one of them is involving the taxes. So I brought in one of the subject matter experts on taxes, which is our auditor, <laughs> Ms. Crystal Powell, to kind of give you all a review on um, some of the things that. I've been reading as far as the county has gone up on their taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So she's kind of going to give you a brief overview of that so that you all kind of understand and we can make sure we put the right information out to the public. It's Powell. Bought us some time. It bought us about eight months of time. Um, 
The other issue is we had a lot of employee changes. With anything, um, with any new administration, new administration, you see things that may not be beneficial to the county. And with that being said, you have to take such action to deal with those issues. Um, I said at the beginning that I never fire anybody, and I don't. I just do paperwork for it. But people essentially are responsible for their own, um, what they do while working for the county. Um, we had concerns and some great debate about properties that Williamsburg County had out there. The fact that we were running out and using facilities, but were not, was not receiving the benefits, was not receiving the pay uh, for those buildings. So uh, that became a big issue, which we're gonna be addressing that uh, tomorrow evening when we bring in all of the, um, the various building committees that have been created out there um, outside of the Office of County Government. So hopefully we'll be able to get that squared away as far as those rentals and things like that. Um, also, there was an issue of a lot of um, buildings that we were maintaining but not actually uh, owning or having any rights to be there. So hopefully those issues will now uh, have been resolved as of July 1st of 2019, but we still have some things that we still need to be working on. Um, 2020, I told my staff, um, as I'm going around individually with my department heads, as well as the staff, my second quarter staff, um, as well as elected, appointed, and um, department heads, that this is a year of restoration and rebuilding. Um, there's a lot of things that we, we need to restore. We need to, one of the biggest things we need to restore is the trust that our citizens have in us. Uh, we have been so long with the negative negative cloud over us that Williamsburg County um, is corrupt. Williamsburg County is this or that, or we don't have, or we poor. All those things affect how people view Williamsburg County. And yes, although going through some mess, sometimes you don't get a little dirty. And that's what it is, going through the mess so that we can get ourselves clean again and clean our, clean our reputation up. Restoration and rebuilding. That, that's the topic of what we're dealing with. This year, I have tasked my finance officer, finance, financial chief, chief of finance, um, to have a financial, financially forecasted budget ready by March of 2020. Now, that's unheard of in the history of Williamsburg County, because usually we wait until June 30th before we can even get ourselves even, even at that point of being able to say that we should have enough money to pay for the things that um, we're expected to have to spend. So how do we come, how, how am I gonna accomplish that mission? And trust me, I think I stressed her out so bad, I'm surprised she's still sitting here with me today. But <laughs> she knows that if I say something, I'm gonna have a plan to try to put it in place. So she trusts my abilities in that area. Um, some of the things that are doing, I have asked my depart new department heads, elected and appointed officials that I have thus far been able to speak to, um, to look into their current year budget and see where they can shave off 10% of that budget for the next year. Um, reluctantly, most of them have said, you know, try to do it like me, because we are a family, and it's, taken, it's going to take every last one of us to really, really tighten it in and figure out how we're going to meet the needs of not only our departments, but also our citizens. Um, we're trying to be, and we need to be, fiscally responsible for the money that we're already getting. So in doing that, there's some things that we're going to have to do. One of those I just mentioned is cutting all budgets by 10%. Renegotiating some of the county contracts for services in hopes of finding some savings. Some of the contracts that the county currently have have been in existence for many, many, many years. And no one has gone back to the table yet to say, hey, can you give us this at a lower rate or a better rate? So that process is going on right now. We negotiate, ensuring that we all are on the same types of um, plans. Our, our, all of our um, devices are all have this, we're sharing the same type of plan. Um, you'd be surprised how much you can find in, in, in various cell phone charges. Everyone has a different plan. Then once you bring them all in, you can get a, you will find that you'll have cost savings. So things like that, not just that, but generator agreements, just various agreements that are contracts for um, EMS billing services that we have. 
those things have been renegotiated to come up with a better, uh, a better way. We're also looking at in, ensuring that we take all of the building rental money and putting it back into the county instead of allowing people to handle the funds and not to say that they misappropriated them, but to make sure that we can get accountability over what we've gotten. So all rentals for the uh, new year will come to the county and then it will be dealt with in that vein. That way we have contracts in hand and we know who's renting the building when they're, when, and when they're renting it. Um, some other areas we're looking at, I'm gonna say that one for last. Because I know people are going to have, have big question marks. Um, small, but um, one of the next ones is small, but can be quite costly. And that's removing our unnecessary desktop printers. Uh, when I first took office, everybody pretty much, a good bit of the percentage of people pretty much had desktop printers on their desks. And then we had main compute, a main printer that everybody prints to. So going through and figuring out, look, y'all going to have to give those up because it's important. Now, there are some agencies that can't because they have special things that they have to print off, special type of paper that they use that they can't. But getting rid of those things will, cause, will save us thousands of dollars in ink cartridges and, and, and additional paper. Um, reduction in our electric bills. Sometimes I ride by the building or I get off late in the evening and I look around and I see lights on in the facilities. Making sure that we hold our employees accountable to shutting your lights off when not in use. Amazing how, what type of savings, because you know when you go home, when you leave from work in the morning, you make sure that heat cut down, you make sure that those lights is off, right? As most people do that. So th those will help us, and it's, if it's done countywide, like I said, we got about 52 facilities that we are, we're overseeing, then we can, do, we can have some cost savings there. Um, reducing the amount of paper using technology to our advantage and not have to print so many items, just emailing, hand it off that way. Things that don't necessarily have to be printed, let's not print them, let's re reduce the number of paper. I talked to an elected official today and basically she said, you know, they burn through paper, their burn rate through paper is significant. And she has done all she could to wish, I looked over and she had maybe a pack of paper left and she said she was so reluctant to reorder some because she didn't want it to be more of a burden on the county. So things like that, if we can get everybody with that system of thinking, then imagine what, wasting paper. Because I see some stuff you print wrong, y'all know how that happened. You print 50 copies and you meant to hit five, you waste the paper. So those things are also what we're gonna be monitoring. And how we keep track of that is every employee has a unique ID number in which they sign into their print to the main printer. Those things will be looked at. And when we begin to see a spike in those, then I know something went wrong. Either we print in church bulletins or we're actually putting, printing out uh, books of some sort. So either way, we need to figure another way to handle that. Um, also, increasing our ability to do video conferencing. In the event that we have meetings that may be off-site, finding out if we have the ability to do video conferencing or any of the other training aids, webinars and stuff like that to prevent us from having to pay for um, training away from um, from here and, and worrying about the travel money and that's again for the internal staff here um, my last piece is something that has been requested of our members of council is to run it down run down I don't don't crucify me my Bible told me Christians but Sunday alcohol sales um, that is a big big market um, we are researching now. It's kind of hard for us to get accurate, complete numbers simply because when they send you your money down, it's kind of all jumbled up into, to, into one pot of money. So I understand people, I, when I've done a poll on this before I took office, people ask me the question, you know, I asked the question, what about Sunday alcohol sales? People are like, that's a day for church. Well, I can promise you half the people that do drink, they, they're right in Georgetown County or they're right in Greeleyville, South Carolina, or they're right in, yeah, I'm looking at Greeleyvillians, or they're right in Florence purchasing their alcohol. So it's not gonna stop. It, it's just allowing us to open ourselves up to more economic, um, economic development opportunities for businesses to come in here and sell. The more they sell, the more um, tax we get. Um, 
So other issues that have come about um, for this year is the dreaded recycling center changes. Dum, dum, dum. People are in arms about changing the time of the rat recycling centers. Well, first of all, the time was always this time because we changed over months ago during the daylight savings hours. So the times didn't change. The, time, the number of times the recycling center is open has. And we are in the process of looking at things and examining them from a month's worth of information that we're collecting to see what is our best options. Do we need to um, change the dates, the days? Do we need to do a Monday instead of a Tuesday? Um, how do we tweak this so that it can offer our citizens with the maximum amount of um, accessibility to get to them? So those are things we're still tweaking. I just ask people to kind of just give us a minute to get it right and and, and try to, to help with the issue. The problem that I have though is we have people who just for the purpose of trying to prove, prove a point that they throw their trash out the window anyway. Whether the recycling center open or not, you're throwing trash out there. But just be mindful that Big Brother is sometimes watching and the day, that one day you think you threw your trash out and you got away with it or you trying to prove a point, um, it's a group of people. I had a meeting yesterday and there was a whole squad of people just waiting to write a ticket. So be mindful. We did, I didn't realize how, how much support we gained and we have in our, in our backyard um, for litter control. So I'm just, just saying, you know, you may want to think about that for a minute and, and just go wait and, or take your trash where it needs to go. Um, speaking of litter, South Carolina DNR has an app you can download called Tip 411. You can report anonymously somebody throwing out trash or dumping. So we are taking litter in Williamsburg County seriously with the new activation of the LCAT Litter Control Action Team, as well as the Keeping Williamsburg County Beautiful Team, um, handled by Ms. Martha Burroughs, as well as Team Up to Clean Up, who is the brainchild of Senator Ronnie Sav, um, joining forces to do a huge countywide initiative sometime in April. Um, we are looking for volunteers, sororities, fraternities, churches, communities, civic organizations, whoever, to come out and enjoy that day with us um, and pick up trash and help keep Williamsburg County beautiful. Um, I'm in conclusion and I'm gonna, when I say in conclusion, that means I'm gonna stop talking and allow people to ask questions and then also allow um, any of our members that's here who came to support this effort to say anything if they want to. Um, pretty much the bottom line is this year has taught me a lot. Um, one of the biggest things that has taught me is um, that I can't be a politician. Um, I can't. It's not in my DNA to be a politician and whatever that looks like or whatever that means. Um, I think that people have to understand that if they elected me to sit down and just watch stuff go by, then they elected the wrong person. Um, if they elected me because they, um, for whatever reason, wanted me to stay in a woman's place, then you elected the wrong person. Um, I revert back to my campaign slogan and saying that the definition of insanity is doing things the same way every time but expecting a different result. We don't have, a, we have a responsibility to the citizens not to revert back to what has happened, what used to be done, what been done. We have to move forward because we see where that got us. And if we continue looking back, it's not, we're gonna miss what's in front of us. We have great opportunities here, but for one year in office, I was fighting every day. And I refuse to do that at this point. Um, I, I, I've told people many, many times that don't forget that I'm not prior military and I'm not prior law enforcement, and I'm gonna always do what's right. And I think probably when people were, some people were getting behind me and wanting me in the office, they felt that they can control me 
and make me do things that were not necessarily right. No, I'm not. I'm going to call you out every time you do something wrong because you're going to call me out, but you're going to put your spin on it. So I'm just saying that I love what I do. I love my service. I love the service that I can provide to our citizens. But if you expect me not to be vigilant and doing everything I can for our citizens the right way, then you've elected the wrong person. And you have the opportunity in three and a half or two and a half more years to vote somebody else in. You know, and I'll take that. I understand. You know, again, I love what I do, but I'm not going to be bought or sold to the highest bidder. So I'm looking forward to a great future. We have um, about two and a half more years to make our, our stake. And trust me, there's a lot of good things coming to this county. There are. Just give it a moment. And it ain't too far along. It's coming. So I'm opening it up to any questions of me. No, actually, I'm going to hold, put the pause in that. And I'm going to ask Mr. Miller, would you come up and say some things, sir? Good evening, uh, Supervisor, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, well, when I first, uh, you know, I was born and raised right here in South Carolina. Uh, went to high school here, elementary high school. Uh, went away to college, uh, got drafted in the military, went away to Vietnam, and finally got out and went to uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, stayed up there, and eventually we moved to a uh, community, uh, Columbia, Maryland, which is a planned community. And uh, it was very surprising at that time that uh, from the time we moved there, when we left there, uh, Columbia was number one in school, education, cleanliness, and just this morning, I think I think I heard that uh, South Carolina was one of the one healthy, unhealthiest place in, in, in the country. And so when I came back here, I came back here with that very same thing in mind that I wanted to work. I wanted to help my community. I took everything I had and I invested in a business. My business is in my district, right up the house from where I was born and raised, uh, work with the school district, trying to, uh, with the charter school and everything and went through that, uh, that situation. But the one thing I, I, I really, sometimes I have a little problem with is that we want so much, but we're not willing to make, take the sacrifice, what it takes to do it. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, I am so proud of our supervisor, number one. And, and, and I'm gonna just say this, and I'm gonna just wanna break this up a little bit. And this is what I always tell my, my uh, friends and stuff. And I said, men count dollars. Women count pennies, okay? So when she came in and when we started this thing, especially with the budget, I mean, I have been there, uh, this was my first term, my last year, and this term, and I'm running for re-election. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, uh, we went through a series of events and stuff, and there was a lot of proposals, there was a lot of things going on, and uh, one of the things uh, uh, was a fee that we were thinking about uh, 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 putting on the citizens. But of course, we worked our way through uh, our way through that, and so, and now I hear the supervisor talking about counting pennies and and checking lights and stuff. When I was in the military, we did this in the military. We were talking about over thirty something years ago. When I worked for the Department of Defense, we did it there. Retired from the Postal Service, we did it there. In our homes, we do it there. We, my son is an electrician, and now we think we're bringing him down and, 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 and so he can install up lights that when we automatically walk out, the lights go off. You know, this is where technology have led us to at this point. And we need to tap into everything that's available to us, everything. And I'm so proud of a supervisor because 
this is a tough job. This is a tough job, and it's not a job for weakling. I'm going to tell you. When I first came here, when my first term, I talked about, mentioned the word zoning, I almost got my head bit off. Oh, no, we can't do that. We don't want that. Oh, Lord, the people don't want that. You, you can't tell us what to do with our land. Okay. The second thing was Sunday alcohol. Oh, no. We were kind of as a Christian. Hey, listen. <laughs> it's hot on Sunday. I like a little glass of wine. I'm not going to get drunk and go do nothing crazy. But me and all my friends... I mean, on Saturday, we go to Andrews and we get up early. So this is only eight miles down the street. And they buy cases and cases of beer in the backyard, in the woods. You'd be surprised what goes on in the woods down there in the country. And all that revenue that we're just letting go, it's not going to force you to drink no alcohol. But you've got to understand the country and the time is changing. It means absolutely no disrespect for the county or anything if you're able to buy alcohol on Sunday. It's just a revenue that comes in. And this supervisor has proposed everything she can before she puts a fee on the citizen. And this is something that I back 100%. I back her because I respect what she's doing. I know she loves Williamsburg County. I know she loves the citizens in Williamsburg County, and I know she will always do the best she can for the county. And so I had a couple of my uh, citizens say, uh, tell, her, tell the supervisor we are praying for her. Tell her we are praying for her because we know how tough a job she had. And we understand all the backstabbing that can go on, people that claim that they're with you, but as soon as you cut some of those pledges they've been enjoying for years, all of a sudden you're the bad guy. We cannot continuously do things that we did 30, 40 years ago. And I don't want to hear no one say, we, I wish we can go back to the old days. And no one want to go back without no air conditioning. Ain't no one trying to smoke, no mosquitoes, or nothing like that. We don't want that. We want what we got new, and we want, and there's no reason in the world that we can't have that if we support the supervisor and her vision she had for Wayburg County. Supervisor, good luck to you. I'm with you 100%. Great job. Thank you. officials. Um, I, I, I want you all to please sign on for um, the next council meeting, which is Monday, where all of departments, uh, elected offices, elected uh, department heads, elected officials, try to get that right, and appointed officials um, will give a recap of the 2019 year respective to their department. Um, in past, you've heard something termed um, a state of the county. Well, it, it's everybody. It, it's all of them will get up and do a one to three minute presentation about the highlights of their department. So I hope that you all come to the council meeting um, on Monday to hear because believe it or not, these people be working. They may not be out there um, telling you about everything and you may not see it everywhere and everything they do, but they're working and this is their opportunity to get out there. It's about 30 of them. So it's about an hour and a half where they're going to get up there and they're just going to talk quickly about what they're doing and, and what direction they're moving their respective areas in. Questions from the audience? Questions from Facebook? Um, we do have one from um, Ms. Rhonda Daniel. Can we start educational programs for students through 4-H or other school groups? The county? Or she she do they have specify. programs already available for in that field? She didn't specify. Okay. Just ask for clarity. The county don't usually, that's not a, a function of Williamsburg County government. Um, we, we will get, obviously get behind an organization that's establishing those things. Speaking of one, I'm going to give um, 
um, Pastor Nelson an opportunity to talk about her be their beautiful place that she actually is at all the time and helping them out because I think it, we need to shed some light on on that um, that center, our senior living center, senior living center, or center senior day center. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Go ahead. Come here, Crystal Powell. <laughs> Chris, she coming, he coming to you. You don't have to come by there. She wanted to know, um, Pastor Nelson wanted to know, is that individually listed on each tax paper? Yeah. Any other questions? Good evening, Dennis Armour. I heard um, a comment being made about the Sunday sales of alcohol, and <clears throat> I thought it's a good idea. And I'm saying it this way for those of you who are familiar with the area, the business or not does not make a difference in this case. If you look at the federal government, what's taking place now, and I'm speaking on behalf of the government side that we're working to do legislative work at the in the Washington area as well as the state government. On the military side, what's taking place, the federal government made a change for any veteran with a service-connected ID card, brother, instead of just retired. If you have a service-connected ID card, you now have access to the military base. There's a reason you have to look at what the federal government's doing. And for those of us who have served in some of these dry areas, we, I used to, I used to have my good days too. <laughs> We have, um, normally on Sundays, you'll find out we can go on base, buy alcohol, and party all weekend, where other places was closed. But now, you look at Sharp Wind, right over 40 miles from us, Charleston 75, and these other military installations. And so what the government is doing is allowing allow anyone with a service-connected ID card to go on the base, get what you want. So that means we have a 3,000 better than Wayne's work now. That's money the county's losing. Money the county will lose. And not only that, but when you these individuals go to the base, they began to go into the commissary, you go into the PX, they're shopping. So the county will begin to lose more money here. Something to consider or reconsider for those of you sitting there standing and listening to this. But uh, <clears throat> these are some of the things we don't look at. But again, I want to say this also. During this year, I watched the county supervisor on the council and the work they've been doing. And I know it looks bad to some of you hear the complaints, you hear this, and it's easy for a negative to work and move around and look at it and see the problem that's taking place. I want to congratulate you all for what you're doing. I even though I read the article today concerning the uh, transit system, and that was a great article. And uh, you heard people want to fire this person, fire that person. And I'm um, like, you, you're firing nobody. You put yourself in harm to lose your job on your own. If you do the right thing, these jobs will stay in place. That's the point you have to do the right thing. But again, I want to congratulate the county council and the supervisor for what the direction that we're moving in. And we hear from the millennial, millennials, which are looking for different areas and things to move in a different direction. So we have to be prepared to move forward with the changes as well. And again, we stay in the same rut. We are going to do one thing. We're going to continue to spin our wheels. We need to stop spinning our wheels, stop turning our wheels so we can continue to move on. If you spend the bills in a rut, just turn it and turn it and turn it back on in the way. Thank you. Any other elected officials? No. No, hearing none. Any other we questions? Have, we do have a, a question on Facebook from a Miss Kathy Tisdale Gordon. Will the money we bring in be worth the lives lost in regards to alcohol sales? I think she's referring to underage drinking as well. And how does that affect the county as we move forward if this is something within law dealing with our youth who are getting alcohol being bought by someone and they're underage? Well, it's kind of my, that's two different questions. That's a law enforcement issue as far as underage drinking and selling of alcohol sales. They have great um, tactical teams that actually come and visit and you know, go in and see if they can purchase alcohol without ID. So that's an enforcement issue. Um, the county is just going to make, I'm going to make the proposal 
based on you know some some thoughts about it to see if we can sell alcohol on Sunday. So if you can get it, if you get in your alcohol, you under age, and you get it on Sunday, you gonna be able to get it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so I hope that answers it. Yes, yeah, Mr. Buddy Brown just commented, um, they'll be spending the money anyway. Why shouldn't we, the county, profit off it? Correct. Any other questions? Mr. Buddy did um, have another comment. It says, Florence County, Florence County Recycling is open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, closed Saturday and Sunday. Wow. They closed Saturday and Sunday. Yeesh. Well, we'd be crucified. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's good to know that uh, Williamsburg County is not the only county that went through, to, went through a reduction in recycling center days. Notice how I'm being careful about how I say that's days. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Which area? I mean, uh, well, Wayne, Brooke, um, don't we have to send out waste to another town? Yes, we do. Oh, we are the one <laughs> well, we answered this cautiously. Many, many years ago, information got out about a mega dump, which meant Williamsburg County could keep their own trash. We'd process their trash, probably other people, as long before I came in the picture. Um, they gave that, that write up. We began to close our landfill down, did not reinstate the major products, major part of the first of our landfill. Um, all we take now is C and D trash and we transport out. To do that would take an uh, act of God. So we'd have to think of another way, whether it's renewable um, or reusable um, waste type thing where we can turn that waste into um, fuel of some sort, electricity or whatever, and then sell it, you know, make, you know, it's done in whatever ways to, to make it no longer um, regular trash. That's the only way we're going to create a savings. But from now, we're going to have to always send our trash out, like I said, unless we get involved with some of these other um, companies are doing to basically recycle our trash for energy. Yes. On the trash question, do we actually produce enough trash to get a recycling contract with someone? Um, you mean for them that keep it here? Yeah. No, we don't. So Which was one of the problems with the the old style dump thing. Yeah, but we don't. We don't produce enough trash in Williamsburg County. So that would mean that if someone were to come to Williamsburg County and make an offer, it wouldn't be worth our money. We would have to bring in other people's trash. And you know how y'all are about bringing other people's trash in. So no, we don't have enough to do it. We have to continue to do it that way. Unless we did have a great offer to do that. Okay. And make it into energy. So where our trash goes, does it get recycled there? I'm not sure what it does in, in uh, Georgetown County. They have a landfill. Okay. So on another topic that you jumped over, mm -hmm. your um, recent forensic audit, mm -hmm. You have promised in the past that there would be more of those, mm -hmm. but having received the first one, what do you plan to do with them? The first one? Your first forensic audit. What do you plan? So do? we're going to take that particular audit and begin to make up some new procedural things in, in the departments, not just that departments, but we, we understand that, that that brought out a lot of internal control issues, something that the county has been struggling with anyway. But we, that particular information will be used to now regroup and determine what is the best way for us to handle financial situations going forward. It also makes sure that those agencies that are acting autonomously are now brought into the fold and training is being done to those employees so that they're up to speed with what's currently going on in the county and how we do business according to the policies and procedures. Um, were the Employees who have been, at least as far as the newspaper is concerned, mm -hmm. the have been reported, were they bonded or insured for any form of defalcation?
position on this visit to Malfeasan? No, that's my knowledge. And is the county going to turn its audit over to law enforcement? Yes. I am too. I'm, I'm proud of you and, and, and the uh, strive that you're making in this town. But I want to just ask about the site, the um, recycle site agents and the change that they had to, you know, step back to. So since they have to be maneuvered like that, have you thought of giving them, I think the question was a whole post over them, letting them work Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and they can have something to do for themselves that might help them on their Saturdays. Oh, Pastor Nelson, you just, that's a tough one. What, and I think what's, we're looking to configure it differently to maybe give them a little bit more time off if they need to get another part-time job. But the problem with the Saturdays is because people were complaining that we close at 5.30. Most people get off work at 5. It, it takes, and some people get off at 6. Because they close so early, people can't get their trash to the proper areas. So that Saturday lends itself to a good majority of people are off on Saturdays. So they have the ability at that point to take their trash on Saturday. Now, I don't know what time the Florence... Um, Recycling centers close. Um, our biggest problems and the reason why we close at 5.30 during daylight savings time is because we don't have enough lighting in the area. And I don't want somebody to get ran over, my attendants or any uh, citizen is dropping their trash off because they're very dark. They really were not necessarily meant um, to be or to, to be that in these in these locations without having enough light. But it's just expensive for us to add additional lighting. But it's a thought. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Anything, any other questions? I, I have a personally. Um, can you clarify like the landfill situation as far as because I think a lot of people are mis have a misconception of why can't we just take our trash to the landfill, but the landfill doesn't accept household trash. Can you clarify that? Yeah, it closed um, several years ago, and they were attempting at that time to, I guess, reinstate it and make it larger or whatever and accept more trash. And that's just from, you know, just hearing what has happened, what happened over the course of the years. Um, the only thing that we can accept there is like the C&D trash and it's one, another area of trash that we can take. But our actual household trash has to be shipped out because we don't, we don't have the ability to process it here. And I can't remember the number off the top, how much we actually generate a year in trash, how much trash we actually take off, take away. But I know it's expensive. Any other questions? Hearing and seeing none. Don't forget out. Don't forget to get out and vote. Um, that voter election time is coming up real soon. I really wish my good friend can give us some information, but I don't know if this is the right medium for it. Can you? Yeah. Voting. The time. Any information? Well, the presidential, the Democratic presidential primary is the last Saturday in February. Registration the 30 days out has already passed, so you couldn't register now for that. You can still register. You would not be registered to vote for that in that primary. Then um, in March, filing opens for regular offices in South Carolina and for Williamsburg County, our House member, our Senator will be up for re-election. I think this is the year of Sheriff, Coroner, Treasurer, Clerk of Court, and Probate Judge. Um, they, the elected officials are staggered. So filing for those offices opens in March and closes in March. And then the primary for those offices is the second Tuesday in June. And then they'll be on the general election ballot.
hearing none, thank you all. We'll, we'll continue to monitor the Facebook feeds for any additional questions. Again, please grab something to eat. I don't want to take 10 boxes of pizza. <laughs>